Hi, my name is James Raleigh, and this is my final project for New School Creation MOOC 2014. Uh, I want to start by talking about the purpose of my school. Basically, I'm completely uh, discouraged by the current education system, primarily due to the fact that students are simply not engaged. And I have yet to be in a school where students are engaged. I've been at seven schools. And this despite the fact that other adults at the schools, the administration, the teachers, don't either don't recognize or don't accept that students aren't engaged, but it's so clear to me uh, just by observing students and talking to students that they are simply not engaged. So um, the purpose behind my school, um, I'm going to basically read the goals. Uh, one, to nurture children who have the capacity to be happy and self-confident through self-knowledge and an understanding of and comfort with the world. Two, to make children lifelong learners by equipping them with a love of learning and giving them the skills necessary to continue learning throughout their lives. Three, to give children the tools to do well academically and professionally by teaching them how to think and learn and question and discover and how to express themselves in both spoken and written form. Four, to engender respect for life, people, and the world we live in. Five, to encourage physically active, healthy children. And last but not least, to develop children who will make a difference in the world. So this is my purpose. These are the goals of my school. Um, the pedagogy, how this is going to come about, uh, is through, to a great extent, through experiential learning. Uh, I want students to be engaged because I think learning happens when uh, someone is engaged in what they're doing. If they're interested, if, they're, if it's compelling, then they're going to learn uh, whether they want to learn or not, whether you want them to learn or not. Uh, it's how we all learn. So uh, I think it's important that what we present to children is compelling, it's relevant to them. Uh, it is meaningful, it's challenging, it's genuine, it's authentic. Um, so experiential learning is essential. Cooperative learning also, you can say collaborative learning, learning how to work with others. Um, I do not believe in competition. I don't think the world, you know, we don't compete directly with people normally and, and we don't need students to compete in school. Uh, so co collaborative learning, uh, but at the same time self-reliance. So as essential as it is to collaborate with others, it's also uh, equally important to be able to do something on your own from beginning to end. Um, technology, uh, although it's a tool, it's a tool that has become so essential in our world that it's not an option. It, it has to be part of education because it's so important. And that includes coding, it includes understanding, includes using technology in every way uh, possible and, and taking advantage of all the affordances uh, of technology. Technology should be seamless. Um, uh, block learning. Uh, most schools, you know, you have these 45 minute classes and I don't think that's meaningful. Um, the fact is that learning doesn't always happen in 45 minutes. Sometimes you need um, two hours, sometimes you need half a day, sometimes you might need a whole day, and, and sometimes 15 minutes is enough uh, for for something, for something in particular. For example, practicing a foreign language. 15 minutes every other day may be enough to keep that fresh in a student's mind. Um, so I want a flexible schedule uh, where we can determine um, what we think is, is the best amount of time. And when I say we, I mean both the faculty and the students in, in collaboration. Um, character education, I think, is absolutely essential. In fact, to be honest, I believe it's the most important thing in education is character education, teaching children how to be good people, um, because too many people just aren't, and uh, how to be considerate of other people, how to be thoughtful, how to be kind, how to be generous, how to be uh, helpful, um, how to share, uh, and, how to, and how to be happy, you know, being this way. Um, responsibility. Uh, I believe that responsibility is essential, and I believe that the more responsibility you give children, the more responsible people they become. Um, so that's that's kind of my my pedagogy. Student mix, to be honest, is, is not that important to me. I don't believe that uh, we can force diversity upon people. I believe that that that's something either they grow up with or they don't. Um, most people. If they have, um, you know, friends of a different race, 
uh, a different ethnic group at school, when they go home, they probably don't experience that because chances are their parents don't have friends of different ethnic groups. So yes, I'd like a diverse student body, but it's not uh, it's not one of the main criteria for, for a school for me. Um, although, although yes, I do think it's important. Um, uh, faculty, um, faculty should be um, also mixed. Faculty should be um, knowledgeable about what they're teaching, but more importantly, knowledgeable about the process. And they have to be, um, they have to buy into uh, the pedagogy. They have to buy into the way uh, the school approaches teaching and learning. Um, that's absolutely essential. Uh, PhDs are not essential, but meaningful um, engagement with, with students is, and the faculty, people who love kids is absolutely essential. Um, I've seen too many teachers who simply don't love kids and don't love teaching, and I'm, I'm never sure why they are teachers. Um, uh, the hiring process, um, I've, I've written about this a little bit uh, in the course, the hiring process is really about putting a, a job description out there that, that talks about the school and the teaching process and the learning process, and then uh, getting people who are interested in, in developing the kinds of uh, lesson plans and, and ideas and, and activities that are going to engage students, that are going to uh, be comprehensive and authentic, and that will um, bring learning in to what we're doing because of the way we're doing it and because it reaches across um, different subjects. I, I don't believe really in the separation of subjects. So I think when you work on something, you work on everything about it, every aspect of it, and you learn uh, in that way. And teachers have to be prepared to do that and flexible enough to do that. And at the same time, unfortunately, um, a comfort with technology is absolutely essential for the faculty. So that'll be part of the, of the hiring process uh, as well, as I said, I, I did I did talk about the hiring process uh, a little bit in this course. Um, I'm not really interested in a resume per se. I'm interested in an online portfolio. I want to understand some of these philosophy of education. Um, I w definitely want to see them interact with students. Um, I'd also like to have students involved in the interviewing process because I think student input is, is essential. I, I value what students think of a teacher. Um, I'd want to see uh, an activity that they can think up um, that combines authenticity and, and specific learning outcomes and, and see how they approach it. Um, I'd want to understand how they assess, uh, and I'll just throw this in. Uh, I don't believe in grades. I don't believe in tests. I believe in uh, genuine assessments, and I'd want to see that they can create uh, genuine assessments. Um, so, you know, my process is, is based on the idea that what a person does is more important than, than what their qualifications look like on paper. Um, that genuine interaction with students reveals to what extent a person is an educator, uh, and that the best teachers are, are going to have thought a lot about teaching and learning, uh, and that they're eloquent enough to be able to express themselves just as we want the students to learn how to express themselves. Um, so that's that's kind of uh, the hiring process. Um, neighborhood, to be honest, is not that important to me. It's 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 what happens inside uh, the school that's that's much more important. You know, access to facilities is important, and if we need that, then we want to be in a place where that can happen. Um, and if uh, if that's not going to happen where we are, then then we'll make it happen in different ways through you know um, virtual field trips, etc. Um, but but the neighborhood, to be honest, is, is not that important to me. And that's kind of related to the fact that the student mix is not that important to me. Yeah, I'd like half girls, half boys. Yes, I'd like a, a mix of, of uh, races and, and, and religions and everything um, because I think that's a value. But um, since I'm really thinking of starting around fifth grade, um, I'm not going to, I, I'm, I, that may be too late for, you know, for teaching diversity, um, but of course, I think if you, you know, if your students are, uh, if, you, if you're educating character, if you're teaching character, if you're, if you're modeling character, then um, diversity will be of value to them and, and they will respect that. Um, 
design, school design, here again, I've shown this a little bit uh, in the course. Um, school design really has to do with uh, open spaces, uh, information commons being the center of the school, uh, information or learning commons, um, teacher workspaces that students have access to, um, large specialized workspaces where uh, kids can get their hands dirty, but also learning spaces. Um, we, we call them classrooms because that's what they are, but, but the fact is they don't have to be thought of as classrooms. Uh, they can be thought of as, as learning spaces. And then open spaces for people to hang out. Um, and uh, that's pretty much <clears throat> what my school looks like. I want to throw in a couple of other things here that I believe are important to me. Um, uh, I mentioned in my goals the idea of physically active, healthy children, and I think I would pursue that through Aikido, which is this wonderful Japanese art that teaches grace of movement and also trains the body and 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 teaches you about movement and about the body, but also about uh, dealing with another person, potentially an aggressive person, but is not an aggressive art in itself. Um, another thing I'd like to introduce is Go, which is this wonderful game, but it's a game that, that requires thinking in a very different way than we tend to think uh, in the West. It is very different than a game like chess. Uh, the, the approach is completely different. It brings a very different, it, it requires a different way of thinking, a different philosophy. And lastly is meditation, which is not uh, a religious concept, but has to do with, um, you know, tuning your five senses inwards instead of outwards. Um, and uh, since I believe that happiness comes from within, meditation is, is something that helps you look within. Uh, and I think that's um, I think it's important to provide that kind of skill um, to students. So that's what my school looks like. Uh, I realize that in a lot of ways uh, I'm missing a lot of specifics, but I think they will fall into place um, as I go further along uh, in the process. Thanks for listening.